Do you know the tale of Zelmoxis, the star-born deity whose wisdom forever changed the course of the Dacian people? In the mist-shrouded lands of the Getai, Zelmoxis appeared not as a mere mortal, but as a divine messenger, bridging the heavens and the earth. His birth was no ordinary beginning. It was the unfolding of a spirit destined to guide humanity through the deepest mysteries of life and beyond. The Dacians whispered that he descended from the stars, cloaked in the celestial glow of immortality. I have come to reveal the truths hidden in the fabric of existence, Zalmoxis would say, his voice echoing through the mountains. The Getty believed Zalmoxis held the key to the eternal journey of the soul, offering them a way to transcend death itself. His teachings were not just about living, but about understanding the very essence of immortality. Death, he often told them, is but a door to a realm of eternal peace. Through him, the people learned to see life as part of a greater cycle, one that extended far beyond the bounds of mortality, as they gathered in awe to hear his words, the wind carrying whispers of otherworldly realms across the ancient forests. In the ancient times, when the Dacians wandered beneath the wide, star-strewn heavens, lost and yearning for purpose, the legend of Zelmoxis begins. They gazed at the night sky, searching for meaning among the distant constellations, while their feet remained rooted in the earth beneath. Then, as if answering their silent prayers, Zalmoxis descended from the celestial realms, bathed in the light of the stars. His form, wrapped in the skin of a great bear, symbolized both the untamed wild and the strength of the earth. His eyes gleamed with wisdom, knowing both the vast expanse of the heavens and the hidden mysteries of life and death. He spoke, and his voice was like the wind through the ancient forests, deep and resonant, echoing through the mountains and across the valleys. I have come to guide you, he proclaimed, his words filled with the promise of transformation. The Dacians, their hearts stirred by his presence, felt as though the very earth beneath them had shifted, awakening something long dormant. Each word he spoke carried the weight of the cosmos, touching not just their ears but their souls, filling them with a sense of destiny yet unknown. As Zalmoxis grew into manhood, his journey took him across distant lands, each step guided by a thirst for knowledge beyond the mortal realm. In the sun-baked sands of Egypt, he sought out the ancient keepers of wisdom, learning the secrets of the soul's immortality. He studied the rites of the dead, the sacred rituals that bridged the living with the eternal. There, in the shadow of the pyramids, he discovered that death was not the end, but a door, a passage into a realm of everlasting peace. The air around him was thick with incense, the weight of countless generations pressing upon him as he absorbed the sacred truths. From Egypt, his travels took him to Greece, where the revered philosopher Pythagoras became his mentor. Under the stars, they spoke of the harmony between the cosmos and the soul, of the cycles that bound the universe. All things are bound by rhythm, Pythagoras would say, his voice as steady as the night wind. Zalmoxis listened, his mind piecing together the mysteries of life and the universe. He learned not just the science of the heavens, but the art of healing the spirit. Returning to his people, Zalmoxis stood before them, his eyes alight with the knowledge he had gathered. Fear not death, he told them, his voice rich with the weight of his revelations. It is but a passage, a journey into a world filled with blessings beyond measure. His words, spoken with the gravity of one who had glimpsed the beyond, stirred their hearts, offering solace where once there had only been fear. Upon his return to the Getai, Zalmoxis appeared not as a mere man, but as a figure of great wisdom, his presence commanding reverence. His words, imbued with the weight of the stars, filled the air like ancient hymns, and the Dacians gathered in awe, their faces lit by the flickering flames of torches. Death is not an end, Zalmoxis would proclaim, his voice deep, yet soothing as if the cosmos themselves whispered through him, it is but a passage to a realm of eternal joy where the soul finds its rest. The people, once burdened by the fear of mortality, listened with hope kindling in their hearts. To further reveal the depth of his teachings, Zalmoxis led his followers to the sacred mountain of 
Kogayonon, where, beneath the shadow of the peaks, he built a subterranean chamber. The earth itself seemed to hum with energy as he labored, creating a sanctuary where he could commune with the divine. The entrance to the cave was hidden, surrounded by towering pines, their needles rustling softly in the mountain winds. Inside, the air was cool and thick with the scent of damp stone, a place where time felt suspended and the presence of the gods was palpable. Here, in the silence of the earth, I will speak with the divine, Zalmoxis told his people. The Dacians watched, mesmerized as he descended into the dark chamber, the flickering light of the torches casting long shadows that danced across the stone walls. This was no mere cave, but a sacred space, a bridge between the mortal world and the realms beyond. For three long years, Zalmoxis vanished from the sight of his people, descending into the cold, dark depths of his subterranean chamber beneath the sacred mountain. Silence enveloped the land as whispers spread like wind through the villages. He has left us, they murmured, eyes cast toward the heavens, searching for a sign. But this was no ordinary death, no final end. It was a journey, one that led him through the shadowed realm of the underworld, where few dared to venture. The people mourned, their hearts laden with grief. Mothers held their children close, fathers bowed their heads. He is gone, they whispered, their voices brittle with sorrow, like the sound of brittle leaves underfoot. In the quiet of their homes, they lit candles in his honor, hoping to feel his presence once more. But little did they know, Zalmoxis was not lost to them forever. Within the chamber's depths, Zalmoxis walked between worlds, preparing for his return. His absence was but a test of faith, a passage from mortal understanding to divine revelation, and in the stillness of that hidden cave, he awaited the moment when the stone would be rolled away, and he would rise once more, the dawn of a new era for the Dacians. When Zalmoxis emerged from the shadows after three long years, the people gasped in awe. The wind carried whispers of disbelief, yet here he stood, whole and radiant, as if reborn from the depths of the earth. His eyes glimmered with knowledge far beyond mortal understanding. I have seen the other world, he said, his voice calm yet powerful, echoing through the gathered crowd. It is a place of eternal peace. His words, carried by the gentle breeze, filled the people with both wonder and relief, confirming what they had only hoped to believe. Death was not the end, but a doorway to something far greater. Zalmoxis's return, like a resurrection, left no doubt in their hearts. No longer did they see him as merely a wise teacher. Now he stood before them as a god. His presence, serene and steady, radiated divine authority. Fear not the uncertainties of this life, he told them, for I bring you the promise of eternity. His words wrapped around them like the warmth of a fire on a cold night, comforting them in their darkest doubts. In that moment, the Gete found purpose, their once troubled hearts calmed by the certainty of Zalmoxis's divine vision. With his divine status now solidified, Zalmoxis became more than just a teacher. He was a living bridge between the earthly and the divine. The Dacians revered him as their priest-king, guiding their spiritual path with wisdom gleaned from both the stars and the depths of the earth. His presence felt otherworldly, his voice carrying the weight of the cosmos itself as he introduced new rituals and practices that would shape the very soul of his people. One of the most profound changes was the ritual of the messenger, a sacred act of devotion rooted in their unshakable faith. Every four years, under the shadow of the sacred mountain, the Dacians gathered. The air was thick with the scent of burning incense, and the drums beat in a solemn rhythm as a chosen messenger prepared for his journey. He goes to the gods, they whispered, their faces lined with both hope and sorrow. The chosen one, adorned in ceremonial robes, was lifted by the tribe and sent to Zalmoxis, his life a gift a plea for divine favor. The Dacians watched in silence, 
their hearts unwavering. The stars above seemed to twinkle brighter, as if Zalmoxis himself was watching from the heavens, awaiting the arrival of their messenger. Zalmoxis's teachings flowed like a river beyond the borders of his own people, stirring the hearts and minds of distant lands. His words, woven with the mystery of the soul's immortality and the eternal cycle of life and death, resonated deeply with other cultures. The air carried whispers of his name across mountains and seas, until even the learned Greeks found themselves debating his nature. Was Zalmoxis a god who walked among men, or a mortal who ascended to the divine? In the halls of Athens, Herodotus, the great historian, pondered this very question. His brow furrowed in thought as he recounted the stories of Zalmoxis, unable to decide if this man, so revered by the Getai, was merely a philosopher cloaked in myth or a deity returned from the stars. Whether he be a man or a god, his influence cannot be denied, Herodotus mused, his voice filled with a blend of awe and uncertainty. The Greeks marveled at the depth of Zalmoxis's teachings. To them, his wisdom held a timeless appeal, his words echoing their own sacred mysteries. Yet they remained divided, as they gazed towards the northern lands, the question lingered in the air, unanswered but ever compelling. Had a god truly walked among the Getai? As time passed, the reverence for Zalmoxis deepened, his teachings entwining themselves with the very fabric of Dacian life. His name echoed through the valleys and across the sacred mountains, whispered in awe by those who sought his wisdom. His cave, nestled in the heart of the holy Kogayonon, became a place of pilgrimage. It was no mere cavern, but a portal between worlds, where the divine and the mortal touched. Pilgrims approached with reverence, the air thick with the scent of burning herbs, the stone walls cool beneath their hands as they entered the cave's shadowy depths. Zalmoxis has shown us the way, the Dacians would murmur, their eyes lifting toward the darkened heavens where the stars blinked like ancient sentinels. His presence was felt in every whispered prayer, every step toward the cave where he had once vanished, only to return as something more than man. The glow of torches flickered against the stone, casting fleeting images of the divine journey Zalmoxis had taken. His words, of life beyond death, of immortality for the soul, offered not just solace, but a radiant hope that transcended the veil of mortality. In the stillness of the cave, one could feel the weight of eternity, the promise that life was but a fleeting chapter in an endless story. For the Dacians, Zalmoxis was not just a god to be worshipped, but a guide through the mysteries of existence, lighting the way to an eternal, blissful afterlife. His teachings became the pulse of their spiritual lives, and they clung to them, not just for this life, but for the infinite journey that awaited. Zalmoxis's tale endures as a shining beacon of faith and the ceaseless quest for meaning. Picture the moment when the mortal Zalmoxis, clothed in the skin of beasts, gazes into the infinite heavens, his heart yearning for answers that lay beyond the stars. His journey, from teacher of men to god of immortality, mirrors the eternal longing within each soul for the mysteries of life and death to be unraveled. His message was not for the body, fragile and bound to the earth, but for the soul, a flame kindled by the cosmos itself. In the sacred cave where Zalmoxis withdrew for three long years, the silence is thick, the air heavy with the weight of time. His people mourned his passing, their faith shaken, yet still they waited. When he emerged, radiant as the dawn, they knew this was not the end, but the beginning of something eternal. The soul, he whispered to them, his voice filled with the wisdom of the ages, journeys beyond what the eye can see. Zalmoxis's legacy lingers, not only etched in stone, but in the hearts of those who, even now, look to the heavens for the light of truth. His story is a reminder that true immortality lies not in the flesh, but in the eternal voyage of the soul.